Good morning, guys. Good morning, uh, citizens of the world, internet, YouTubers, uh, and whatnot. Uh, hi, hello, my name is EJ, and I'm back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to take a look at and, you know, kind of figure things out. <laughs> well, you know, uh, for me to narrate what happened and maybe this could be a learning lesson of you for sorts a less a learning lesson for you of sorts Anyways, man, I'm all tongue-twisted. Okay, so before I start going on About my idea for this piece and where it came from and whatnot um, I Figured now would be a great time for me to just talk about what's going on in the scene because this first part is just gonna go by real quick um, so yeah uh, so I'm in Blender right now uh, and I'm using Blender to help me prototype my scene, um, kind of help me figure out my composition, help me figure out my lighting and help me figure out my perspective. Um, so this is the reason why like 3D is very vital for like 2D illustration because it helps, it helps troubleshoot a lot of things that you know can get really wacky and weird when you're just trying to do it on 2D. So yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, I'm in Blender right now and basically I'm just blocking out shapes uh, for the train. Um, the title of the piece is Blue Train Surfaces for uh, Snacks and Refueling. And so you saw me just blocked out real quick the train. Uh, it was just all simple shapes and whatnot. Um, and I ended up like uh, just editing like a box made it into a rectangle and for like the first part of the train uh like the engine uh i kind of added like the the i don't know the engine's cockpit or the cockpit for where the engineer set sits so yeah i kind of just added it and just i added like some cabin of some sort like right behind it but it definitely looks like like a some form of vehicle that's like rising from out of nowhere like a submarine or whatnot and so I modeled that first and then I modeled the platforms and then I obviously modeled uh, people which basically I just have rectangle uh, stand-ins for the people you know just to kind of indicate where everyone's gonna be and where everyone's kind of hanging out and then uh, so I had those and now I'm like adding colors and whatnot just to kind of help me differentiate where the shapes are um, so yeah but uh this is the best part about like 3d as you can see i'm like moving my camera around trying to get like a good angle trying to get like a good setup for the scene um so it really helps to do some things in 3d like such as this one uh you saw me lay out like a bunch of um human figures of course They're, that's what those rectangles are supposed to be you see me lay them out in front you know so they're not necessarily like the focal point, but they kind of help um, ground the whole scene in a way because, you know, they're kind of like in the foreground and like the train is like the focal point. Um, eventually, I ended up moving this two people because they're kind of blocking the train too much, as you can see. Um, in the final scene, you'll end up seeing me move them over a little bit to the other side, which I just did just now. <laughs> Because I realized, yeah, the train's being blocked. And the train's like the main thing, you know. So we gotta have that in there. So yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so for the most part, everything is set. All I'm doing right now is just pretty much the lighting. Which you see me do right now. Um, well, actually I didn't do the lighting. I did... Uh, uh, boxes on the ceiling it basically what the boxes are uh, is just they're supposed to be lights originally was my intent but then they kind of just ended up being like placeholders for perspective you know um, I do wireframes now to help me with my perspective uh, nowadays that's what I do but yeah that's what those boxes are for and then now I'm like messing around with lighting and once again, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with backlit scenes, but for some odd reason, I'm doing a backlit scene again. And yeah, backlit scenes are just very immensely hard to draw, just because everything just gets so wacky with the lighting. But, um, and it gets so dark too, depending on the situation. 
but I, I really wanted like a backlit scene because I kind of had uh, I envisioned a, a dusk scene for for this one so um, that is part of the reason why I guess I decided to go for a backlit scene but yeah you can see me pretty much finish off this whole blocking um, scenario in Blender and really the whole thing took like an hour maybe not even uh, maybe an hour and a half of course the rendering took a lot longer um, I don't have a very powerful machine so rendering on my machine is very slow but as for the actual work in of itself um, Oh, I lied. Yeah, I totally forgot that this is one of the fastest renders I've had because um, I the way I set up everything on this one was just it, it just went by real quick. I just remember that. But if I had if I had turned on like a lot more settings, like this would go so much slower than what it is now. Cause yeah, I totally forgot that I recorded the rendering. <laughs> Which is really boring because we're just watching the computer render the, the scene out. But yeah, I mean, even now, um, even now you can see that it's not very fast because um, if I had a powerful machine, that would have gone by in seconds. Uh, keep in mind that, you know, my... Keep in mind that this is going by... Uh, my the video is going by really fast so the time lapse but you can see on the top right now um the elapsed time is uh, i can't tell that's those are minutes or hours um those are those are minutes because there's no way it's hours but anyways my whole point is that i don't have a strong computer because there's times where my rendering can go on for hours sometimes even overnight so yeah but I, I guess I just got really lucky because the scene is so simple that this why this render just went real quick and real fast. So yeah. Anyways, after this scene is rendered, I'm gonna go jump into Krita and then I'm gonna start doing my sketch, my outline, and then after that, you know, I'll do my normal routine. So I guess now would be a great time for me to talk about where the idea came from. <laughs> So the idea for this particular piece is from another daily sketch group prompt from conceptart.org and the prompt as usual is the title of my piece which is blue train surfaces for refueling and snacks and the very first time I read it the very first image that came to my mind instantly was that scene in Michio Kaku's movie Spirited Away. There's a, there's a scene in that movie where a train is half submerged and is going through water and basically that was kind of like the scene in my head you know where it was just like hey why not do like some underwater kind of train you know. Um, and so that was kind of like my idea, my impetus. Um, in all honesty, uh, a train like this wouldn't exist because it just, it does not make sense in all honesty. Like I wrote it on my notes, like this kind of passenger system just doesn't seem to make sense unless there's like an underwater city that it goes to or whatnot. I, I'm not sure. But yeah, so my inspiration was Michikaku's uh, train station scene from the movie Spirited Away. And it's such a wonderful movie and such a very iconic um, scene in the movie. Um, when I mentioned that particular scene, everyone would instantly have the image in their head and they know which one I'm talking about. And so like, yeah, as I mentioned, that was the inspiration. Uh, I took that scene a little bit farther and, you know, ended up modifying the train. Instead of it just being like a semi-surface, semi-submerged submerged train, I ended up making my train kind of like a submarine, you know, which is what my idea is for this scene. Um, I'm sure you've seen submarine surface. Um, it's a very uh, action-oriented affair. Uh, when it surfaces out of the water, it when it breaks through that water, it sp sprays like a lot of you know water around its area and whatnot, and so it gets really messy when it when the submarine surfaces, and that's kind of like my idea in my head 
with, with this whole scene was this train's kind of like surfacing and there's water like pouring out of it out of its crevices and you know just making a big mess everywhere <laughs> which is the reason why i don't think this train station would work because the passengers is waiting for the train which just gets super wet <laughs> when this train comes out um but yeah that's like the idea you know it's like this train is surfacing from underwater you know just to fulfill that prompt so yeah um and you can see like me right now sketching when i sketch it out i sketch it as if it's you know a submarine all this water coming out of his little crevices and little engine parts and and yeah so that's how i'm sketching things out um and then i'm sketching the rest of the scene out you know i just drew robot marshallers i think is what they're called okay so my inspiration for those two robots is right next to that post uh that i just drew uh, the one with one of their arms raised and one of their arms like pointing to the side. Um, my idea for those two robots is basically like aircraft marshallers. Those aircraft marshallers, marshallers, I think that's what they're called. You see them on airports and they have basically glow sticks in their hands and they're guiding the airplane into like parking and whatnot. So they do all this crazy hand motions. And I kind of thought like that would be cool, you know, like they have this marshallers just trying to guide the train into stopping or whatnot. But then again, the concept is kind of ridiculous because if the train's underwater, it's not going to be able to see the marshallers. So I don't know why I thought about that. <laughs> but... I thought it would look cool and it does look cool but its function is obviously non-existent at this point so yeah but hey it's an illustration and that's what is so fun about this you know you get these weird things that you see that you know you recognize later on it's just it's just so odd you know I mean I love this illustration don't get me wrong like I have my issues with the color like I don't like the colors in this illustration but overall like the actual theme of the illustration I thought is very great right but I just you know after like looking at it after a year I just noticed all these discrepancies that I was just like yeah that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense and that doesn't make sense like so many things about this illustration doesn't make sense and so it's kind of funny to just make fun of it now, you know, like I'm having fun, like making fun of myself for thinking of all these weird, crazy things that I could put in this illustration that in the end doesn't really work. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, the martial arts doesn't make sense. And obviously underwater train, submarine train just doesn't make sense. But I mean, what can I do, though? <laughs> you know, the prompt did ask for a train that's surfacing. So, you know, in a way, I fulfilled the prompt. But, but yeah, I guess I can just say that it's a tough prompt to illustrate. So, but anyways, enough about that. My sketch is about to be finished. So, I kind of want to go over that real quick. Because there are some cool things that I kind of added to it. You know that I thought was cool like the the very cool thing that I thought was was really awesome is the fashion design that I decided to end up choosing I ended up choosing Victorian era fashion which I love the Victorian era fashion if it's like paired together with like some sort of sci-fi elements you know because it's such a mismatch mishmash mix or such a contrast basically you know um, Victorian era is in the past and so obviously to have something sci-fi which is typically you know sci-fi typically denotes the future you know it's kind of like a huge contrast so yeah I, I thought that having the people dress up in Victorian fashion was very cool um, the train design I thought was very interesting the train design is not very um, Victorian at all and actually it's not even sci-fi at all it's actually more modern art deco um, I'm like totally forgetting my art genres now but I'm specifically thinking of like the 1920s like the jazz age and like the vehicle designs of of that time the vehicle designs of that time was very flowing and very long and very huge and elongated and that's kind of like the inspiration for the train which you could see you know 
Like you would think I would have designed kind of like a locomotive, but I decided against it. I decided to base my train design on 1920s cars, you know, very old uh, jazz age cars. So um, I thought that was a cool element, you know. Uh, adding those two moons in the back is very, very sci-fi. I thought that's a very cool element, you know, so it kind of denotes like this is an alternate world, you know, and this exists somewhere else and whatnot. So those are all cool sketches that kind of kind of ended up staying in the whole scene. So yeah, but now I've begun my coloring phase, which if you guys have been following me and know my coloring method, my coloring method is like insanely crazy. <laughs> I just kind of throw a bunch of colors, typically is what I do, and then, you know, as soon as I have all this crazy mess, I end up like, you know, trying to harmonize things. And one of the biggest critiques I have of this piece is um, the craziness of all the warm colors. Like, I absolutely love how I ended up choosing blue for the train. Um, which I'm even trying to remember... Oh yeah, it's part of the prompts. <laughs> That's why I ended up choosing blue. I totally forgot about that. Um, uh, so I think it's cool that the train is blue and that it is set against a semi-warm environment. Um, and when I say semi-warm, it's, it's not really so warm. Like there's a lot of green in the background and I think that uh, this is basically one of the things that I don't like about the piece you know is that I didn't do a lot of filter edits and color balance edits after I finished with the photo bashing part which I just now got done like if I had done that I would be have been I would have been able to harmonize the background more you know like the foreground or not so much as the foreground but the focus which is a blue train is just perfect as is like I wouldn't really necessarily change anything on on the area of the, where the blue train is because it pops out of the page but as for everything else in the background it's just it got messy with the colors I mean the ceiling is a great example of it there's a lot of greens on that one you know um and so it basically what it ends up doing is it ends up killing the contrast which would have been nice if that was still existent in the piece you know um because that contrast would have helped harmonize the whole image altogether and help pop out that that blue train a lot you know but yeah, I mean, it didn't work out that way. And I, it's kind of sad that I didn't recognize it until like now, basically, you know. So yeah, um, overall, like I would feel like this piece is kind of like semi-okay, you know. Like it could be a lot better if I had done a few tweaks here and there. But overall, it's cool, you know. So yeah, but now I'm in basically my detailing stage. And of course, in my detailing stage, basically what I do is... I delineate my edges, I accentuate my shadows, and I add highlights. Now, what I mean about those things is that when I delineate edges, I basically just make sure that my shapes read very well and that, you know, my lines are straight. Um, I don't do it for everything. I mean, typically the background needs to be fuzzy and they don't need to be super sharp. And then the foreground elements need to be sharp. Um, so I try to be conscious about that. Um, but really, the, my delineating edges have more to do with shape, read, you know, whether the shapes read very well or whatnot. And then when I send to it shadows, what I mean about it is that, you know, if, if it's dark enough, I leave it alone. But if it needs a little darkening, then I add darkening to it. And then adding highlights is pretty much self-explanatory. It's just adding a little bit of highlights. So you'll see me go through that. Oh look, I just accentuated the shadows of the blue train. That's what I mean by accentuating the shadows. Just kind of just go over it real quick and just add a few shadows and whatnot. Um, but yeah, you'll just see me do that over and over again in like parts of the pieces until I start getting to the special effects part, which is all like the water elements of the illustration.
really kind of touch base on the whole water effect thing. Well, I thought I was going to start working on it, but actually I'm still just working in the background. But um, what I was going to say about the water effects is that um, kind of like what I mentioned earlier, when the strain surfaces, it's kind of messy, kind of like the way a submarine would. And so the way I had envisioned in my head is exactly like the way I had depicted it in, in the uh, illustration, you know, all this water coming out. Um, the difficult thing about this is that this is a speed paint, right? And, well, A, doing water effects such as splashes and whatnot, that's already hard to pull off, you know, that's like really hard to kind of figure out like where the water is going to be and how the effect is going to be like you you kind of picture in your head it's like yeah it's, I kind of see what the splashes are but then having to like move it in such a or put it in such a way where it looks natural that's the difficult part you know like the water and the splash the the waters that's coming out of like it's cre of the crevices of the train like that looks natural but like the splash part on the on the front of the train where it kind of splashes onto the platform like that honestly still looks weird to me you know i mean the effect i kind of pull off like the idea of the effect i is there you know i think if someone was to like look at this image they'll realize oh yeah that's supposed to be like water splashing you know but in all honesty like I, I feel like the effect is just not as good as it should be you know so it that was kind of I feel like that was kind of a loss for me in a way you know where I didn't pull that off very well but yeah um illustrating water splashes are already difficult so having to do it in a speed paint such as this one makes it even more difficult as well you know so um i really shouldn't like cut myself down too hard because water effects are already difficult to begin with and then the other thing that i tried to emulate you know is this whole idea that there's going to be like water on the platform and water in the ground and water has reflective properties so what you'll see me do like towards the end of this illustration is that you'll see me like do cut out or lasso parts of the floor and then on the lassoed area I would put like uh, a mirror image of the scene on there um, just to kind of indicate that you know there's water puddles of water there uh, but you can see that the effect didn't stick very well or it's not very noticeable that you know You could almost get rid of it and people wouldn't even notice that it's there in the first place and the reason why I said that is because that little um, Painted Reflection that I already have because I already have like a painted reflection like the reflection of the Sun. Oh It's weird. I just now realized that I did do some filter edits on this one I'm looking at that and I just did some filter edits so I stand corrected. I did do some filter edits, but I feel like it could have gone on some more, especially in the ceiling because the ceiling is still a little too green. So maybe I could have gone for another two or three filter edit pass on that one. But anyways, I digress. Um, anyways, going back to the whole reflection thing, uh, I already have like the reflected light painted on there. Um, but I thought like adding that whole puddles of water would even strengthen the idea of the reflection but obviously it just it didn't stick so yeah but yeah anyways now i'm detailing the the passengers waiting for the train which again i thought was just absolutely cool all, all this victorian era people just hanging out and the pose of that guy that's like talking to that lady i thought that was kind of cool you know it just all looks so natural and whatnot so yeah, I'm just detailing them out. Um, really, I'm just adding highlights and adding a little bit of shadows. I, I didn't want to super detail them, obviously, because it's just speed paint and they're like such a small part of the illustration that I didn't want to focus on them too much. And here's the robot marshallers or the aircraft marshallers of whatnot. They have glow sticks in their hands. 
Of course, there are robots and whatnot, but again, like I mentioned, that they, they are such a weird element in this piece because, you know, if the train is underwater, he, the pilot of the train or the engineer of the train would not see the martial arts at all and what they're doing, so it seems so pointless. So I don't know if the martial arts are marshalling the, the passengers or the train engineer. I don't know. But yeah, I digress. So yeah. But yeah, I'm just going to continue detailing this. And then the last piece I detailed is my favorite part, which is the train. Uh, my 1920s Art Deco style train that I am now currently rendering. <music> So this piece is pretty much close to being finished, uh, close to being done. Um, I obviously just got finished rendering the train out, which I love the style of it. And now I'm working on those puddles of water that I was talking about that in the end doesn't really look all that obvious uh, overall. So I feel like, you know, I could have dispensed with it. But here's the reflection that I was talking about. I copied the scene, um, reflected it and then cut out all the other parts and just left the puddles of water but yeah as you can see like from afar it's not very obvious so the effect wasn't really all that great but yeah overall this scene I liked there's a lot of things that I don't like about it like the lighting I mean not the lighting but the colors um, well the lighting is hard because it's backlit but yeah the colors are off and whatnot but Overall, it was good. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this with me. I will see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night. <laughs>